Well, hello. It's been a while since I've done a video vlog, and uh, but today I'm here at Silverstone, as you hopefully would guess by because it's written behind me. I'm here with Andy Houghton. Uh, Andy is racing in the Ducati Cup this year, and uh, today is a British Superbike test day. The BSB guys were here yesterday, but the Ducati Cup guys are testing today uh, also. So uh, hopefully it'll be a good day. We're going to keep an eye on what goes on and uh, hopefully have a bit of fun too. So. Well, we're just uh, waiting for things to kick off here at Silverstone. Um, so well, I'm here with Andy Houghton, I mentioned that a moment ago. Uh, Andy's been racing with the British Motorcycle Racing Club with Talon Racing for the past few years. He's been racing a, a Yamaha R1, which is a 1,000cc uh, rather fast bike. And obviously now he's switched to Ducati uh, to race in the Ducati Cup. Um, and Andy is a, uh, a paralysed rider. He's uh, racing against able-bodied riders, as he is here too as well, which comes with some, some problems, or some, not problems, some challenges, shall we say. Um, so things like he's unable to put his feet down and stop so we have to uh, hold the bike up and, and launch him away and when he comes into the pits we have to catch him as he slows down as well uh, but he's uh, that doesn't slow him down on the track too much he's a, a very fast rider and very capable uh, but it does mean unfortunately uh, particularly uh, he ends up having to start at the back of the grid because you can't have someone standing holding a bike up in the middle of the grid so it's either starting from the back of the grid or from the pit lane uh, so that adds further challenges. So, so today, you know, we'll launch him out. We've had a word with the uh, the marshals at the end of the pit lane, so they don't stop him because obviously they can't. He can't stop, um, and then he'll be heading out uh, again shortly. So, good to be back here. We're on the national circuit today, and as you can tell from behind me, it looks like it's a very nice, dry, warm day. But it's not warm. It is quite cold. So um, I don't know what that effect that I have on the track. I'm sure the tyres or entire warmers will, will warm up quick enough anyway. Um, it's the national circuit, which is about 1.6 miles. So it's quite a, quite a short circuit in that, that way. And, you know, some of the top guys will be lapping this circuit in um, well, well under a minute, well under a minute. So probably nearer 50 seconds for the uh, BSB guys. Um, so, but I'll, I'll keep an eye on how the, uh, the top BSB guys, they're down here, they're, they're down the far end of the pit lane behind me um, and I'll keep an eye on those as the, the, as the day goes on. Um, they were here yesterday testing too. Uh, the Yamaha was going well with uh, Jason on it and uh, Josh Brooks was uh, doing well in second as well. So I'll keep an eye on, on uh, that, that, how they get on too. So. Noisy when the BSB guys are out there, they're quite loud bikes. So uh, Andy's been out there, he had a good session, he proved his lap time, lap on lap, found a steady pace. Um, and um, we he just come in, the, the session's about 30 minutes long, so he did about 19 laps in that time. It, that included uh, three visits to the pits for us to check things over and, and make sure everything's okay. So that all went really well, very pleased with how that went. Uh, we've made a couple of suspension settings ready for the next session as well. And we're just checking things like the uh, radiator water. These bikes do tend to run very hot. So they do tend to use a bit of water too. So um, so we just check that I, between its sessions as well because uh, that, that boils up. It's a, it's a problem that all, all the, those Ducatis have. So, um, yep. anyway, all good. For a second time, and he put it went much faster again. Yeah. He did a really good, a really good job there. Uh, got down well within the 110, uh, yeah. which is required for qualifying in his class. Um, I've now wandered down. The PSB guys are out. I've now wandered down to their their end of the their pits. Yeah. And as they've gone out, it's just got a few little light spots of rain. But I don't think it's anything. Yeah. Tiny spots, I don't know if you can see behind me. Some of the, the guys, some of them just going out and doing a few sighting laps and coming straight back in again. But they're very loud. Time now, and uh, got a few moments of silence. Um, 
but while, while we've got a few moments, I, I, I wonder whether some of you are asking, uh, some of you may already know, uh, but Andy being in a uh, wheelchair, how he gets to ride a motorcycle. Um, well, you know, it's quite, it's, it's quite interesting and he, it's quite amazing how, how well he does. Uh, but basically on a motorcycle, you use your feet to change gear and to, for a rear brake. Uh, and so for Andy, we've moved those controls onto the handlebars. Uh, so he has a uh, gear change on uh, two gear change buttons on the handlebars that activate uh, a system on, that actually manually changes gear, uh, like like a normal normal bike would do. So so he, he pushes a button to, to change up and another button to change down on the gearbox. And likewise, there's a second lever on the handlebars, which is for the rear brake. Now a lot, a lot of racers will run uh, a type of lever, either like Andy's running or a, what they call a thumb brake uh, for the rear brake as well. Because when you're racing, you don't tend to use the rear brake very much at all. Um, so it's it's one, not one of those, those brakes that you, uh, um, you you apply for the corners. I think most riders, if they use it, there's probably more to do with controlling the bike, um, either when it's on its back wheel or on going into corners and things like that. So so anyway, so uh, you know, so we, we, the bike's been modified for Andy. Quite a crowded track. He didn't really get much time. He, he, he said he wasn't. He didn't go as well as the previous session. His lap times were okay, slightly slower, but not much. Uh, we have made some setting changes to the bike, to the suspension setup, and uh, so with that, that um, may or may not have been fruitful. So, so what we're going to do for the last session is put him back to our base settings. Uh, go into a few laps, and then we'll put those settings back on after we've done a few laps, and we'll see get a direct comparison between the two. So uh, that's what we're going to do for the, next, the last session of the day. So, then because uh, when uh, when Andy came in not it was running hot but we had some oil and water residue around the bike and we just wanted to check that uh, the things are okay so uh, there are breathers that, 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 um, that, that will release some oil um, and these bikes run incredibly hot hotter than designed uh, than they're designed to be uh, we can't put coolant in I mean for race bikes you have to run plain old water uh, and the reason for that is if you crash and you put radiator coolant on the track it's really hard to clean off and it leaves it really really slippy for any other bikes coming around the corner so so it is part of the regulations you're not allowed to run coolant you have to run water and that as a consequence of that the bikes tend to run a bit a bit hotter and obviously they're running high revs all the time so uh, so, so that that also means that the water bubbles over and you lose a bit of water and it's something else we have to check on a on a regular basis uh, every time it comes off track we check the water levels uh, on the bike so we've just did a few little track a few little checks there um, uh, there was a uh, uh, a breather pipe that we had to, to um, drain off as well, so um, but yeah, it's just nothing unusual. So you may have noticed there that uh, Andy was being interviewed by somebody. Well, I think that was the. Uh, the Ducati media guy, so he was uh, interviewing him and uh, chatting about, you know, about riding the Ducati. I'm not exactly sure what they said, but um, it looked like it was interesting anyway. Maybe I can see it on their website. off there and he's got no throttle so presumably where we take the bike apart we've moved something or something's been disconnected so we're just going to have a quick look at that now. Well that's it and he's come in at the, uh, the end of that session. Uh, it was cut short because the bike wouldn't run. Uh, I think where we had the bike apart, uh, we had uh, we touched inside the the, uh, um, the air box and probably knocked a cable. So we straight we put the cables, we seated those cables, and it fired up and he went out. Uh, but he lost about half the time. 
Uh, still got a still got a good laptop lap in, got into the 102s, um, uh, which is quite respectable. Oh, and I've just come outside and there's a few spots of rain, so very timely. Um, so this session is just, you probably see behind me, I don't know if you can see some red lights on and a checker flag. Uh, it's just finished now. Uh, and the next one to go out is the last uh, British Superbike session as well. So but we'll probably be tidying up, so I might not get a chance to watch that. So. Interesting cars here. I'm not entirely sure I know what that is. I could go and try and ask somebody, but it looks fast, that's all I can say. circuit's gone green again so uh, a few of them are heading it back out and again now so uh, there we go and, uh, uh, yeah we'll see how the uh, day finishes off Had a good day. I think we learned a lot about the bike and and uh, and things. We got a good good measure of where he is. And, uh, and it's remained dry as well, so the rain stayed off us, uh, which is a uh, which is a good thing. So um, anyway, I hope you, uh, you you enjoyed the video blog. It may have been a little bit bitty. Um, I haven't done this for a while. And. Uh, In, in July and um, so hopefully uh, well, we'll be able to have a, a bit of fun out there at Donington with the World Superbikes so that'll be uh, uh, quite a nice, nice challenging day let's hope for good July weather